from the editorial board, board I would like to call now um, the oldest member, I hope he, he won't get mad at me by saying this, of our editorial board, <laughs> Professor uh, Pejevic, to, to, um, to make some um, appropriate introduction. Okay, thank you. I can unmask myself. Okay, that's great. I feel much better now. Okay. Oh, yeah, that's great. Thank you. So, well, somehow we have to address our present situation. Let me just start the timer because I'm not rational with time. So, um, I have to address present situation in online teaching. And I will address that a bit as a personal experience and some personal views. Though that's not just mine, that, that's not just personal, but I'll take all the responsibility. There is a group of people who share the same views and share opinion about, uh, share opinion about that. Okay, so what's the situation we're in? A virus, a virus pushed us online around March 15, I actually might be, that was actually March 15, 2020, our school went online and we were not fully prepared because no one expected that, but actually we were not fully unprepared. We were in quite good situation. I'm prepared, we were, at least I was, I'm prepared only for the video. I never had video conferencing experience, I never recorded my video lectures, and uh, that was actually a perfect opportunity to fix our teaching materials, to put them in order. Everything was actually there, but uh, you know, having some time to put things in order is always good. So uh, we had lots of written materials already online, and as a matter of fact, that's a consequence of this conference. Uh, actually, not that even conference, just preparing the conference when I learned about platform Zenodo. And Zenodo, thanks Milica, Milica Shevkushic told me about that. And uh, it turned out to be really useful because uh, you get server, you get bandwidth, you get digital object identifier, and you get backups and everything else just for free. And, you know, that's a sort of cloud service and not at our, every cloud brings bad weather. So, actually, we enjoyed, I enjoyed Zenodo very much, even before we started to switch to online teaching. Not much recording in my case in previous semester, but it was hard to record at that time. I didn't have camera, proper camera. I didn't have setup. I didn't have studio. I didn't have, it was a bit hard to access, not that hard, but you know, limited time to access to school. And during that limited time, you have other things to do. Okay, so Zenodo, about Zenodo. <laughs> you see, that was actually discovery. Here is one of my teaching materials, which I was about thrown away, throw away. And instead of throwing it away, it turned out to be posted at Zenodo and had for two and a half years, 8,000 and almost 600, maybe probably now more than that, views. So uh, it told me a lot. It told me which of my materials are being read and what are the topics that attract interest. So starting point, our starting point, we had teaching materials at Zenodo and all the information actually was posted, I posted of all of my six classes, six courses that I handle, uh, at our site. Uh, so this is my homepage of that site, that's TNT according to Italian comic, Alan Ford. And actually, uh, th this named after that. But uh, actually on that site, we posted all the basic information, all the links to our teaching materials, and some of the teaching materials are posted there. And actually, that machine had a long history. It is kicked out of my office around 2005 as obsolete. I didn't like to have it in my office because there is a complete mess and I, the last thing I needed was that machine. But actually, still, it, that machine still worked as a server. And it had Ubuntu 06.04, probably the last one, the last uh, um, instance of that operating system being alive. Maybe, maybe there are others, I don't know. But actually, I thought, oh, how come that it is possible that uh, that works, operates on this uh, platform? Okay, uh, at that time, during uh, virus out, out, outbreak, we had some problems with SSH, and the machine was a bit unreliable. We complained and complained and complained, and they told us, hey, what do you expect from 15 old or 20 old year machine? So, at that time, about at that time, I had Raspberry Pi 3B uh, in my apartment. And that machine also became obsolete. So I had to kick it out of my apartment. And when I kick something out of my apartment, that ends up in my office. And when something is kicked out of my office, it ends up as a server. So 
in my apartment, that machine was used as a personal server. So I thought, well, maybe for teaching purposes, I can have my own server, not having to ask anyone for anything, you know, just edit everything as I want. Uh, if something gets wrong, I can fix it and so on and so on. So at that time, about at that time, Ubuntu 20.04 just appeared in server version for Raspberry Pi. And, you know, good old Apache 2, Apache 2 could be installed. So that's it. That's the machine. And that machine is his familiar um, uh, domain name, Pea, that's my nickname, freedombox.rocks. Actually, that machine worked as a freedombox server at my home. And I kept that, uh, that domain name. And here you can find, just to have some feeling about the size of the computer, although most of the people are familiar with the size of Raspberry Pi, this is one dinner. I'm going to translate that in English later on. So uh, what was the point? Actually, this is in my office and this is at my home, new version, Raspberry Pi 4, and that's really good machine and works much better, much faster, and so on and so on. So. Uh, translation uh, in size, one dinner is about 10 euro cents, but in value, that's about one euro cent. Uh, and that comparison is favorable to dinner. So uh, actually, for foreign uh, visitors uh, and viewers of this presentation, that's just a translation. So the results. That site, payafreedombox.rocks, still works. And that worked as a homepage for all six of my courses and served about 370 of my students. That machine that is less than 50 euro in cost. And hosted my homepage <laughs> besides. Actually, that was the main purpose to host my homepage. No, just, just kidding. And it was fun to set up and maintain. Actually, that was really fun. You know, I like to set up servers and to maintain servers. I really like and enjoy to work with it. And I do not have to ask anyone for anything. So I'm independent and free, and I really enjoy that. We had to switch to online. And as Mary Poppins said, in every job that must be done, there is an element of fun. So I found the fun. And that fun was to, to, take, to <clears throat> establish my own server. So in October 2020, so what about time? Yeah, I, I, I can fit. So in October 2020, I realized that the things are getting serious. Not just, it seems that it was not just a temporary turbulence and that we have to record our lectures and organize video conferences with our students. And we have support for proprietary platform and we're informed that it is for free, which sounds like a really sustainable business model. Probably there is some other sort of indirect business model or something like that. At that time, I learned the term vendor lock-in, which, which scared me a little bit. Maybe I can, you know, post a lot of materials and get used to, and then, then circumstances will change or licensing, um, licensing conditions will change and so on and so on. So I decided to use online teaching freedom number one. And fortunately, at this school, we have online teaching freedom number one. And online teaching freedom number one says that teachers are free to choose their online teaching platform. I really, we have that freedom at our school, as I said, and find it really important. And I appreciate that, and I believe that this right should be universal. Though there were objection, objections to that, different voices while we discussed the platforms. For example, objection number one, to simplify it for our students, um, all teachers should use the same platform. To ridicule that and to have some fun, I said, well, maybe uh, teaching the same content in all courses would simplify it to our students even further. And then objection number two, it is hard for our students to handle so many installed software packages. Actually, for all the tools I used, software packages, which students do not re are not required to download and install any software other than browser that they already have, not even plugins for their browsers. So what's the present situation in my teaching? And yeah, well, I'm very, very close. Uh, I use Open Broadcasting uh, Studio for re to record lectures. I learned how to use it maybe three weeks ago, four weeks ago, something like that. An improvised self-funded studio that you would uh, have pictures uh, pretty soon. I used in order to post lectures and then get a digital object identity. Students immediately ask for a streaming service. That's something I did not expect, but that's what I received. At this moment, my lectures are posted at YouTube. I um, push to public access. I believe that uh, my lectures actually your public school and uh, I believe that our lectures should be publicly available. For example, in the US there is fair access to science and technology research act. 
which says about the same for research results, even in the United States. So I believe that at least we should public our lecture, uh, we should make our lectures publicly available. For office hours, I used Jitsi, and actually that worked. With, with having in mind how many students appear at the office hours, it's quite enough for that. Information route is still at my homepage, at my server, and it seems it works. Uh, and actually, it turned out that I had a lot of feedback. And what about feedback? Feedback, uh, I, uh, for the first day, I had 200 and something uh, we use out of 70 students I had. So a lot of former students that live abroad now sent me feedback. And that was enjoyable. However, what we, we can do better? OK, the studio looks like this. OK, this, as you can see, it's heavily improvised. And there is complete mess in my office, which you would expect. Here is camera number one, which shoots at the, the whiteboard. It's not whiteboard, but whiteboard, which should be a little bit, I, I wish it to be a little bit bigger. Here is second camera that shoots at instruments, because that was for my uh, electrical measurements class. And here are the instruments. And this is, you know, just the place where to put and fix all the cameras. And that's the studio. So uh, what is the proposal for the platform? And I will finish here. Three components. I believe that we need learning management system. And Moodle is mature open source, actually, free software tool. Then we need the video conferencing software. And there is a plenty of options here. They are listed. I'm not going to read of them all. And actually, students require some sort of media server. They call it player. Uh, like Media Goblin. At present, I have YouTube, and that's the only component that I'm missing. I didn't have experience with Media Goblin. And actually, I believe that it would be nice to run, at, run these components at our servers locally at home. So what do we need? Actually, software is already here. Installation and configura configuration tutorials will be great to have, because it's not that easy and that straightforward to install. That's not just an item from repository. And then uh, we need some sort of guidance uh, regarding resource storage processor bandwidth planning. So let's work together. We want to run, build, and maintain our own servers. So we want to be free. Well, thank you. Okay.